Hello, uh, my name is Oliver Johnson from ABB. Uh, I head up the UK e-mobility um, division for uh, ABB UK. And uh, I've been asked to come in here and talk to you about some of the solutions we provide as ABB to support infrastructure supporting e-mobility. ABB is leading the way to a zero emission mobility future. We're really focused on engineering solutions for transport for tomorrow, today, including smart transportation solutions from EV chargers for the home through electrified fleet depots and opportunity charging for electric bus and trucks to high power chargers for highway stations of the future. And I will touch on some of the details of these aspects later on within this presentation. When you look at the CO2 emissions globally for transportation, this is approximately 24%. And approximately 75% of this comes from the roads and of which 65% of this comes from cars. So this is a massive carbon issue um, for everybody. When you look at the growth of the use of electricity for transportation, primarily in most of the OECD countries, the growth in electricity generation is generally derived from renewables. So ABB is working on integrated solutions for battery energy storage, renewable integration to use this energy in a good way to provide electrification for mobility. Just to give you some basic stats, uh, we've got about 800 employees, which has grown from 10 from over approximately 10 years ago. So we're a very high growth rate company. Um, we've delivered something like uh, 20,000 charges in 85 countries, we've delivered 24 million charges, which has transferred approximately uh, 332 gigawatts of energy. So there's a lot of miles in a vehicle uh, that we've delivered globally using our solutions. Continued investment in this space means we've been aggressively building facilities to support this new area of the world. Um, and we've got some very good innovation labs in uh, the Netherlands recently built as a purpose built facility where we can take buses and cars into the facility for testing and interoperability testing with OE car OEMs and uh, heavy goods vehicles and bus manufacturers. We've invested in ChargeDot in China um, for uh, enhancing our AC home type charger offering and commercial AC charger offering. And we've got a very new site in Valdana that's being completed this year, which is a very large facility to produce our DC chargers, which are currently produced in Italy and other factories around the world. But this is a new facility to support the high growth that's occurring in Europe to produce chargers to support immobility. Just to look at where we are in the UK on some sort of typical numbers, it's quite interesting to look at some of these. Um, today, we've got about 32 million cars on the road, but generally with the switch to mo shared mobility solutions and public transport, um, it's generally viewed that by the time we get to 2050, that the number of vehicles would have dropped to approximately 20 million. Um, I'm a little bit suspicious skeptical about that type of information. Um, I still think there's going to be quite a lot of use of cars. But to achieve the net zero targets for 2050, approximately half of those cars, 11 million, would need to be fully electric. And these are the figures that are estimated to be what it needs to be. So today we're approximately 1% of electric vehicles on the road um, and we need to get to 50%. But most of the statistics suggest we are heading in the right trajectory. Another thing that's worth looking at is uh, looking at transportation and there's some COVID transport statistics on a government website that I look at occasionally. And you can see really from the middle of the pandemic, there's uh, the, the road transport system dropped down to approximately 37% use based on 100% prior to the pandemic. And when I looked just recently on the uh, 27th, um, sorry, on the 28th of the 5th, you could see that the numbers are crept back up to approximately 100%. And over the bank holiday weekend, what we recently had, it was up as, as high as 110% uh, and commercial, light commercial vehicles were up to 120%, probably uh, mostly by deliveries on weekends of uh, things that people clicked on. So just some background factors, really. Um, the Heavy goods vehicles and uh, buses and coaches is, is, is an area that we're also electrifying. And I'll touch on that later on, but I've predominantly uh, looked at um, cars as part of this focus of this presentation. This is just really a look at um, 
um, en route DC power charging that's been put into the ground in the UK. So there's approximately 700 sites to date um, which have been invested in on, on 50 kilowatt plus charging. So this is the um, what I would call the purple sector on this sheet. And that's really uh, forecast to grow probably to 30,000 points by 2025. Um, most of the motorway services stations uh, will be refreshed or upgraded in 20, by the time we get to 2025. And this really supports stress fee ownership of EVs where the, the range anxiety and the availability of charging stations at these locations is, is quite a barrier to some people where they're using cars for long journeys on regular basis. For a lot of people though, vehicles are, um, electric vehicles are suitable for purpose, even if they only need to charge once a week and they haven't got off-road parking, um, it still can be a viable form of transport. And I always talk in generally about these things when I look at my parents who have a car, they probably do 50 miles a month in their car. And even if they had a solar panel on the roof, it will be good enough for their use case. Um, destination locations such as supermarkets, um, venues and shopping locations can also be key enablers. When you're doing something, I, again, why not charge your car when you're doing something else that you actually enjoy or want to be doing or have to be doing? You don't really want to be sitting in your car just waiting for it to charge. But um, that just gives you a little bit of insight on the key numbers on the, the types of charging that's taking place in, in the market. There's a very much uh, a a massive explosive growth taking place in this sector where everybody is trying to get into providing this type of infrastructure because the tipping point's been reached and i've just put some examples here you've got mfg uh, motor fuel group that have been building sites bp a building site shell have announced all of their petrol stations are going to have electric capabilities on it and then Ecotricity and GridServe have teamed up to replace all of the, the motorway highway locations with new charging equipment and enhanced charging equipment. So again, this should remove some of the barriers that sometimes people feel in EV ownership. Um, these are just some of our equipment uh, deployments in the UK with some of the key charge point providers, um, just with Eon, Ionity, GridServe, BP Pulse and Fastnet. Um, this is a high power 150 kilowatt type charging where you can typically put in, say, 100 miles into a vehicle in approximately 10 minutes. OK, this is slightly smaller power units, which again are, are typically used in supermarket locations, a lot of local authorities. Um, this is a 50 kilowatt charger to 120 kilowatt charger, which you quite often see in some fairly public places. Um, the uh, little, for example, on the right, GridServe and uh, Electric Highway in the middle and um, Franklin Energy in some larger cities, etc. So these are public facing charges. Sometimes they've been put into support, say, um, fleets or taxi fleets in certain towns. Sometimes they've been put in just as general public charges. But this is becoming, again, uh, more and more prolific across the uh, landscape of the UK. Just looking at in-home and domestic charging, um, and also on street low power charging. A lot of cars, if they've got off road parking or the cars are static for long periods of time, can typically charge at seven kilowatts. So you're typically putting in 20 odd miles in an hour in a vehicle. So this is really suitable for on route charging, but this is very suitable for when you've got static cars overnight or you've got static cars at workplaces. So workplace charging and static charging at home um, is very much a growth area when you look at the number of vehicles that are being sold. And if you look at the total number of vehicles that have been sold for this year, uh, it's already well over 100% of where it was last year. So there's an enormous growth and take up of electric vehicles, both um, full electric, which is mainly what we're interested in, in terms of selling electric charge, but also hybrid units as well. I'd then like to just show you some uh, uh, typical sort of installations that you would see with uh, different types of vehicles at different applications. So obviously a home domestic charger, if you're, if you're fortunate enough to own a big garage with an electric charger inside it to plug your car in, then good for you. But again, most people just would have these things on the outside of their house and at nighttime you plug it in when you put your car up on your drive or on your off street parking location. But again, these types of applications can also be used in workspace. As part of the uh, 
transportation infrastructure, obviously local bus depots are more and more becoming electrified. And again, we're supporting this effort as well with many, many, many bus stations in the UK. Um, and we've got a Harrogate bus station in Birmingham Airport with overhead pentagraph type charging, but we've also got depots going in where we've got overnight charging for the buses. So again, this is an important part of our transport uh, electrification. I'm showing you these slides just because it, there's a, an infographic at the end that allows you to navigate around it and it shows you some little videos, etc. on it. And uh, you'd be welcome to go to that website after this event and have a little play with it. It's quite fun. Commercial feet. So this is a very important sector. Uh, last mile delivery, decarbonisation, um, but also air quality is a big issue. So this is quite an important area um, that's becoming very, very um, clearly defined, being restricted within certain cities as clean air zones. So this is a, a very important area which we were very active in as well. But again, go to the website, have a play, and it just shows you some charging type technology and what the kind of stuff that ABB is doing. Fast road charging, we covered this before. Large sites, high power charging, quick stop, coffee, 100 miles in. This is typically 10 minutes for 100 miles. Um, this is a, a key for the motorways and uh, other charging hubs. Some of these charging hubs are, no, are located next to large conurbation areas where people are living. And uh, this also can motivate ownership where people do not have off street parking, where they can zip in once a week, get a coffee, go to the post office, do a bit of shopping. And within 10 minutes, they've got their week's worth of energy in their vehicle and they need, and they need no more than that. So these are also become quite interesting enablers. Here's the link I'll leave you with just so you can uh, go and have a play with this maybe later on. You can click on the buttons and it will take you, zoom you into the, the site and show you things working, etc. cetera. Um, have a play with that maybe later on. Uh, thank you for your time today. Um, and uh, enjoy the rest of this event. Thank you very much.